Hello. Hi, my name is Jennifer Bacall, and I am part of the Programs, Partnerships, and Outreach Division of the Harris County Public Library. Thank you for joining us tonight, and we're very excited to share with you a young audience's partner group, the Houston Aztec Dance. This will bring us into a world of ancient Mexico. It'll be a performance of traditional Aztec dancing, storytelling, drumming, and songs. While you're watching, please think of any questions that you have for our performers tonight, and you can share them in the chat. At the end of the show, the performers will be answering questions that you have. With no further ado, here's our performance. I'm not sure if we have our performance going here. We just said good evening to you in an ancient language from the Central Valley of Mexico that was spoken as a trade language all the way to Central America and brought up as far as here as Texas. Tonight we'll be sharing with you pre-Hispanic dances and talking to you a little bit about the culture known as the Aztec or Azteca, but we know as to be descendants of the Mexica. The term Mexica came when they looked at the place of the water in the Herods. So we're following the vision of founding a city, Tenochtitlan, which is current day Mexico City. The disciplines and the forms of arts and science have been passed on for generations through oral tradition. Our family is a part of the lineages, oral tradition that has been passed on. And we have been focused on these traditions now going on 19 years. We helped bring the tradition here to Houston, Texas. So I will be expressing a little bit of what we know to be part of our history as descendants of the Mexica people. The Danza Azteca Esplendor has been practiced here in the United States for over 40 years because throughout colonization and the assimilation process, once people came over here from other parts of the world, we had to go through a systematic process of changing our languages, changing our customs, changing our ways. The establishment of this country in the last 245 years has been a testimony, especially here in Texas, to those of us who are survivors of what was a mass, massive cultural erasure of our people, our ways, our foods. But today, we are able to see these things coming fluid when we eat salsa and guacamole and chile, and we enjoy chocolate and these different things. So enjoy our performance as we begin, facing the four directions, honoring the four cardinal points in the same manner that our ancestors taught us. Four being for the four seasons that change throughout Mother Earth. Four for the stages of life from being a baby to being a teenager, to being an adult, to being an elder. Four for the sacred colors of corn that also represent the original four colors on our medicine wheel 
of the original peoples of the earth. So as Kalmetak Tonansing Yolitsyot, which in Nahuatl translates to the higher school of education of Mother Earth resurrecting, we are remembering these teachings that our ancestors left for us. These are the steps that we honor the water, the fire, the wind. This is the way that our ancestors showed us that if we can stay in connection with the cosmic vision that was passed in studying the stars, studying astronomy, and following that guided path that's left for us to have a beautiful life, then we can continue on even throughout these times now that have changed. My traditional name is Mapiham Balkichache. I go by the name Rainflower, which is a translation from Kiawi and Sochi, Rain and Flower. I'm here present with two members of the Kalmekak and also my three children. We will start off with the four directions and go into the dance called Fuego and then followed by a dance called mm, Mayawel. Mayawel translates to little girls learning about working with the medicines. Also women learning how to help one another through the birthing process and the pregnancy process. The first dance, honoring fire, fuego, let, will be an honoring of one of the main elements that connects all of us as a human race. So we hope you enjoy our show. Thank <laughs> you. 
side of the world to establish a government here. I'm one generation. My parents are another generation. My children are another generation. When we say those things, we're talking about every group of people that are born into one another's families. So if you're a young person, you look to your parents and you say, you are the generation before me because we came and I'm your child. Then if you choose to have children in the future, then you will become a part of another generation passing on. So our ancestors here in Texas were South Texas while we beckon people. Now it's a language group mainly, it's how it's taught, is that it's a tribe. There are many divisions within that tribe. Many of us that are rediscovering who we are through birth records, but most especially those of us that still pass down traditions like foods that we made are something that maybe some people that haven't done their genealogy haven't realized that they actually have indigenous or Native American roots. If your family makes tortillas, tlaxcalis, by hand, not what word for tortilla is tlaxcali, then more than likely they use something called a matate or a stone tool of sorts to grind the corn. This that my son is bringing up is called a mortajeto. It's something that's very common in kitchens today. There are many teachings that go just along with the mortajetes, but as you can see, it's a stone tool that we use to grind our corn. Today we make our chiles or our salsas or our different types of herbs that we use. These are ancient tools from our ancestors that were passed on to us. It's still a part of our culture. If your family has perhaps a mutajete or a mutate that was passed on for generations, that was one of the key elements that we know that we come from indigenous people. Or the fact that your family still may make those. Or tamales. Perhaps your family gets together during Christmas time, posadas they call them also, to make tamales together. It's a traditional thing that comes with teachings with using our hands to make things. We also brought examples of clay, pots, and figures if you guys want to grab any of them, and instruments that are handmade by ancestors. These are a combination of ancient and current artifacts. Things that we picked up along the way in our travels and going to visit teachers or elders or going to ceremonies. instruments that are called ocarinas or flutes. And then of course our conch shells that you heard us know earlier, the ocean, Mother Earth, gifts us. The ability to be able to cut the edge and make a trumpet per se, the embouchure is the same as a trumpet when we blow our conch shells. This one happened to be hand carved by an elder who gifted it to, gifted it to us when we were down in Tula. 
This is a multiple version of clay pottery that's made. This is something that we hold our fire inside of. The women carry fire in our tradition in this dance. And then also a holly. That's something that we use to carry water inside of. And you may see those even commonly today in the market. It's also a modern day one that was given by my teacher many years ago. So we have a mixture or a combination of things that are old, things that are new. And since most of us, yes, live and work in the cities, or at least in the modern day world, we have to adapt. So even the way our outfits are made now, they're not hand stitched or sewn, they are made with machines. As you can see, I have satin material on mine. That's not something that was common. But my son has something that is shiny and wool, and that's a symbol of our ancestors who used to actually temper down gold so thin like material that they would wear gold. Our ancestors actually walked on gold streets. We had gold bathhouses. Gold was not something that we took in an envious manner. We utilized it as any other element of it. My daughter's outfit is also made of different types of materials representing springtime and flowers. Our youth are represented through these concepts of jovial, happiness. Um, also, Uriella is using different forms of northern style with the fringe, and also a mixture of his headdress and the different styles that he has is a combination of both, again, modern and the old. Ulysses is actually wearing a very handmade and hand dyed top known as the heels that are texturized and made down in Oaxaca. And her belt as well is from Oaxaca, and it's hand stitched and hand woven, hand dyed. The things that we're wearing on our feet, if you hear us making the noises when we dance, those are the center of the tree that comes from Ayayotes, a very tall 40 foot tree that it almost is a, about the size of a baseball. When they're ripe, they fall, and we cut them open, boil them up, clean them, and are very careful when we do so because it. If we uh, inhale any of it or, or smell it or eat it, it can be poisonous to us. So it's not a fruit that we eat, it's something that we use. And um, these are all handmade things. We have uh, different leathers that come from animals. Mine has alligator leather. My daughter's has um, a loom stitch on the top of hers as well. Also symbolizing Native American cultures from all around the Americas. Um, and then the large tablet, if you look like that, and I'll show you that is wrong. This was given to us again by another elder from participating in ceremonies in Mexico. It is a, what they call a Mayan trumpet. It's actually a very large piece of a maguey plant that was hollow. Well, it's hollow already. We made a mouthpiece for it, stripped it of the edges, dried it out, and as you can see, it's almost as tall as I am. <laughs> and when we use the same embouchure as a trumpet, it makes that sound the same as the gargoyles, but in a lower tone. Because we're out of our travels as a family, we were given these gifts. We were told it's important for us to share them with people so that nobody forgets if they're part of our culture where they come from, the roots that were here in the Americas. Also, they were told they taught us to teach about these things so that we could share the knowledge. Our ancestors were very fluent again in astronomy. We followed the seasons. So this Masawali scene or Matawali of a, a texture, I mean it's a concept of what the common people we consider ourselves a representation of that, doing agricultural dances or dances in honor of the elements or dances in honor of the animals. It doesn't put us in any different pedestal of others because in our culture we do things circular. And in a circular manner, there are no hierarchical systems. We're able to function as a people together, coinciding with one another with the cosmic visions, again, given through the studying of the stars, and then as well studying the patterns of the wind. So 
there are a lot of misconceptions when it comes to, let's say, our temple spaces, which we call Teogalis. Teogali being the sacred home translated for the word for in Nahuatl for our temples or pyramids, some people call them. Those are points that are marked, like what's coming up next week, the change of, from season to season, from summer to fall next Wednesday, we will have a fall equinox. In each one of those sacred houses, the Teogalis, or the temples as they call them, those center points mark those sunrises and those sunsets. There's a lot of misconception of what those temple spaces meant, but it was, again, a representation of the cosmic vision of our people, following, again, what they saw in the stars, reflected through the waters, reflected in the mirrors, and learning to coincide and be harmonious with one another. That's the important thing to understand when this tradition that we're following was established in the 1300s. This was a discipline. This was a militarization. This was five million people in one area. They had to learn how to feed themselves. They had to learn how to function. So they had their own form of government. Chinaquas were created out of mud and sticks and water mixed to make a very uh, sturdy space to be able to have irrigation on the lake of various forms of food, like beans, chiles, avocados, known as aguacates. And all of these things are words that we express today when we say, oh, can I get some wok <laughs> at a restaurant? You don't realize that the base word was aguaca. Aguacac, and then into Spanish later, aguacate. So these are some of the teachings that we learn in going to different areas with different elders, again, who leave their oral traditional language. We will read one more dance, and then we will teach you a song in Nahuatl so that you can, at home, learn a little bit more about our that the horses were brought over from Europe. But again, history and science have shown us that there were horses already here on our continent. Since we were able to, as the house, once the border crossed us through the annexation of Texas, having to become what they considered Hispanic, because they changed the terminology on our people several times throughout the generations, we learned to stay close to the land, work with the horses and the livestock, so that we can establish ourselves as Texians or Tex-Mex, or what currently people consider themselves as Tejanos. That's what our family is. We are a generation, seventh generation and eighth generation Tejanos. So in establishing that, we were able to stay close again to the horses, the livestock, and in this dance, you will see the motions of the horses and the movement of the horse. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Central America and brought up and ran as far as, as Texas. The purpose of having a trading language is important because I mean, you're having a very large group of people getting to eat and function. A lot of trade needed to happen. So they would actually send runners. Indigenous people ran a whole lot. And as you can see that in current modern day times, some of the best marathon runners today are indigenous people from Mexico. There are nearly 70 dialects of indigenous, which means from the area spoken in Mexico today. Over 200 dialects of those nearly 70 languages are spoken. Zapoteca, Mixteco, Nahuatl, Otomi. These are all things that most of us have never heard before. They're very sing-songy. They're not monotone sounds like what we're speaking right now in English. Here in Texas, Huawei was also a language, one of the many traditional languages spoken. And the songs that we're going to teach you are in Nahuatl. Nahuatl is one of the original languages that was from Mexico. A lot of people think, oh yeah, the first language of Mexico is Spanish. No, Spanish came from Spain. Just like here in the United States. Was English the first language? spoken here in the lands of the United States? Of course not. Between Canada and the United States alone, there are over 500 tribes with all of their various languages. So to combine that alongside Mexico's pueblos, which is what they call their tribes in Mexico, the people living off the land, speaking their own dialect, having their own language, and are away from the original Spaniard case system that was established as part of their government, then what you're looking at is a very vast amount of indigenous native tribal people that have been in existence here. The DNA that comes from our family matches DNA of what they call uh, Paleolithic Texans. Paleolithic, the word, if you look that up, it gives us a time space of 10 to 16,000 years. So the DNA that runs through my children, my sister, my brother, my nieces, my nephews, my parents, the bloodline, the DNA that we come from here from South Texas matches that of indigenous Native Americans that have been found while they're digging up to build roads or schools and the DNA, our DNA all matches. So that was part of the reason why I looked for these traditions followed it, 
And the more I studied with elders from here to Los Angeles to Mexico City, I, it's just so much information. There's beyond the language, the sciences, the, we are the sixth oldest civilization. Uh, recently, in the last few months, they finally have released uh, 20 plus years of what they're excavating underneath in Teotihuacan. And they're finding that we had one of the most sophisticated writing systems, not just through the pictographs and the codices, but actually one of the most sophisticated writing systems that even surpassed um, others that they thought were the most sophisticated. So those are the things that we try to teach people about, the things that were lost, things that were burned. The tradition is passed from us speaking to each other, to our children, and the words that leave our mouth go through our ears and into our heart. And in that manner, we're able to reconnect. So those that's part of the teachings that come with us as oral tradition of people. Uh, we're gonna teach you a song called Wewe Papadoy. Try it at home. It's ancient wewet butterfly papalo. Let's try it. Wewe papalo. Ancient butterfly. We say from our hearts, yolo, to our moms, nansi, to our fathers, tatsi. Then our parents say it back to us, to the children, pilsin, and kokone. Pilsin are the general children all together in a male form. Kokone is for the girls. Then we say thank you in a shortened form in this song. It says, so ga ma. Try it. so ga ma. And then it says again, ancient butterfly. Where, 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 papa lord. Papa lord. So let's try it lightly with the drum. So if you want to, it's a call and response. So at home, you can learn this song. Ome, ome, 
Gay. Gay. Now. Now. Sorry. Now. Now. Okay. So let's sing after we say our name, numbers in now. Ready? Say. Amen. Yay! Now we. person out there, somebody ties your shoes or makes you a little food to eat, puts clean clothes on you. When you go out into the world, you spread your wings and you fly like a butterfly. However you are when you're at school, however you are when you're out in the streets, whether you're respectful or you're mean or you're grumpy, all of these attributes come out as a reflection of your own family, how your parents, your grandparents, your siblings, how you react to one another. So we teach our children, we want you to be beautiful like butterflies, because when we see butterflies, we run after them, and we want to capture them. We love when our children are beautiful like butterflies. But sometimes, and we all have these kind of days, we're stingy bees, we sting with our words and our actions. Oh, no, no, no. Tell our children, be beautiful like butterflies. Or maybe they're being, oh, not having a good day, and like right when you're going to eat a piece of food or a sandwich at a picnic and a fly land. Ah, oh, you say, go away, go away. We tell our children, don't be a stinky fly with your actions or your words, and don't be stingy like a bee. We want you to be beautiful like a butterfly. So in teaching them this song, we're teaching them manners. We're teaching them how to interact with the world. And so we will continue on with the dance. Can we check? Oh, it's time for Q&A, isn't it? I think we're done. Ah. Uh, we have a lot of questions there. Um, <laughs> okay, let me, let me check it. I didn't realize we were going on and on, guys. Hi, okay. All right, do you guys have questions? I don't see any questions from any guests. Oh, wow. All right, so we explained what we're wearing uh, traditional clothing that's handmade. Uh, 
Hi. Um, Hi. I can read you some of the comments and questions if you'd like. And also, um, Brian had mes uh, mentioned that there is time for one more dance if you did want to do a dance. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, okay. I wanted to um, just showcase one of the last dances that my daughter was going to do. <laughs> Um, well, we had some lovely comments. A lot of people were really excited to um, get to hear you and see you guys. So thank you again for spending your night with us. We really appreciate it. Um, one of the comments was from Jeanette. She said, happy Independence Day. Thank uh, <laughs> you. Uh, Marciala said, uh, you're great. Thank you for keeping our traditions. Um, and you saw someone asked about the costumes, but you already kind of touched on that. And then um, we had a young man um, ask where he could learn how to dance. Um, he is 18. Well, we teach uh, classes for free. Um, but I guess we could put some links on it later. Uh, we're at Moody Park usually, Mondays and Wednesdays for the past seven years in the evening. Oh, that's awesome. Um, how many people are in your group altogether? I was wondering. Mm -hmm. There's several families. There's four founding families, including ours. Um, we do young We've taught thousands of students across Houston and surrounding areas. And the presentations we've been in front of even more. Um, mm -hmm. I would say there's nearly 40 at times. It just depends on our schedules. We really it's hard to get everybody together, especially. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, definitely. A uh, new question just came in from Kimberly. She says, amazing. And then she says, what are the feathers? What kind of feathers do you use? We wear uh, macaws, pheasants, and rears. Um, a lot of the beginner dancers start with turkey also. Uh, specifically here in Texas, it's a great thing. And it keeps it humble. There's a story about the turkey gets all poofy and upset with all the animals. And then he turns them around, but turns them out. And they all laugh. It reminds us to be humble. Um, most of these traditions that we follow are about humility and respect towards one another, towards each other, of course, our elders and our children. Mm -hmm. so, always an honor and so. Sure. Um, I was wondering personally if the colors symbolize anything that you guys wear. Always. Yeah, yeah. Always in colors of the earth, of course, green and blue, uh, red and blue are also traditional colors that combine the fire and the water. A lot of teachings that go with that. Um, most of the new dancers start in white. So if you ever run into people in this tradition and they're all in white, they're uh -huh. usually in the first few years. Uh, in this tradition, I was taught that you are not a dancer, a full dancer, until you've done a decade. So once you put 10 years in, now you can say uh -huh. you're <laughs> Right. Sure, you've got to earn that, right? <laughs> I was wondering if there's any kind of conference or anything that you guys meet other people who also practice the same okay. style of dancing. Yeah, not necessarily conferences. This is our way of life. Um, many uh -huh. maintain the traditions very quietly and also out in public. We mm -hmm. helped bring this Ansa Azteca Espanol by way of Pahuva into Southern California by way of Colorado. That's how our teachers brought it here to Texas. And so we were able to establish ourselves in that tradition, which happens to be public. Very fast paced, very shiny, very big. Um, but we do a lot of public companies with others. There are tons of dancers in the state. There are some affiliated with the church. Um, there are some like ours, that they are not. There are some that have even gone um, into the activism to okay. establish a, a vision or a, that we are, there are still families maintaining these traditions. Of course, there's the concheros who were the original keepers that brought the dance out through the puncha and through the discipline, the very strict discipline, like militarization structure. So that's a a little really quick. There's there's hundreds, there's thousands of dancers everywhere around the country. Oh, that's so neat. That's awesome that you know, like someone else commented that you guys are keeping traditions alive. Um, <laughs> Everything is changing so fast all the time that I, I, you know, you fear that some of the history of different groups will get lost. So it's lovely that you guys are really grabbing onto it. Um, and they they uh, asked if you have one more dance you'd like to finish with or a song or anything. Okay, yes. Uh, can you do something? Okay, my daughter's gonna go ahead and do what's called the sun dance. Uh, 
because there's not enough space for all of us to do it in a very rigorous mm -hmm. fashion. So it'll be performed by Siklal Mina Kiros. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Oh, that was amazing. Thank you so much. Um, and could you remind the audience when you'll be at Miller Outdoor? Yes, uh, the 29th at 11 a.m. Okay, excellent. So yeah, folks, um, if you get a chance to go and support this awesome group and see them in person. Um, I also have words to have any more information for us. And then we're just asked to dance um, our Calmeca indigenous organization. Okay. We do tons of free stuff for people in the city. We're smack dab in downtown, near downtown. Nice. So people can learn and grow. Mm -hmm. 
That's awesome. Thank you. And Brian mentioned that that's also all posted in the chat. So if folks want to scroll back, they can find the details sure. for that as well. Uh, thank, thank you, you, audience, for tuning in tonight as well. We have another dance program next Thursday night, a very different style. It's flamenco dancing, and that'll be at 6 p.m. next Thursday. Thank you to our awesome performers, and thank you to all of our patrons for tuning in tonight. Bye. Bye.